this is gold medal rap. Me and my people never holding it back. You're never safe from harm. This is a massive attack. This is an arrogant smack to those preaching the whack. I tell them. I get it proper like crack knuckles and rap. Fucking just cat snack on them like lamb cutters. And I dance on them like Jackson on the bad to what? Huh? You should start watch like tag. You will kick goals like man. You and I'm rewriting the man. You will. I'm the shit like man. You will. Huh? I'm saying you will. I remember my first memories with records. Um, I think it was my fourth birthday. A family friend gave me Queen's greatest hits on record. Yeah. And yeah, just another one bites the dust. That's one of my first music memories. The bass line and the drums in that. It was a Bang and Olsen, Olufsen um, stereo. It was my dad's that he brought out from South Africa. It's a Danish company, Bang and Olsen. Um, and he loved his stereo. When they migrated to Australia, that was one of the things he brought with him on the boat, on the ship. And um, I blew, I blew my dad's stereo listening to Dire Straits and then Michael Jackson bad when I got the 12 inch of that and he was he should have been mad but he wasn't that mad <laughs> from having too much bass turned up but yeah I remember in our lounge room just on his speakers which were either side like that and I'd sit in the middle and listen to it with my little headphones on when it got too late yeah I does it have to be genre specific? That makes it even harder, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like Off the Wall, Quincy Jones, the way he produced Michael Jackson's first album. Just the sound of that. It's, yeah, you can play it really loud and it doesn't distort because of the way things were mastered in the 70s is a lot different to now. Now a waveform looks like a block. And if you look at the Off the Wall, there's at least waves up, like, uh, what's the word? Dynamics, Dynamics in the music. Yeah. Do you want to take a newer one? I'm gonna have to say favorite production would be Voodoo. Um, Good answer. Because it's probably the first first full record that I've listened to where not only does it not get old, but if I don't listen to it for a while, it'll come back and it sounds brand new to me. And there's things that I'm still finding now after bashing it for years now. D'Angelo album. D'Angelo, yeah, Voodoo. D'Angelo Voodoo. Um, it sounds like probably, you're in the room with them. Yeah, that's, the way, yeah. The way it's mixed. Um, Russ Elevato was the sound engineer, mm. and when you listen with the headphones, it, it, you literally feel like you're sitting in the room with them while they're playing it, because everything's really dry sounding, there's not, not a lot of reverb and yeah. that sort of effect to make it not fake, but mm. you know what I mean? And also that's very raw, it's how a, a drum kit sounds. Yeah, exactly. And how and the instruments actually sound. And the vocal effects could easily have been done by like a good enough sound dude, you know, if he was there, he could just like you know tweak it and make it sound like that obviously they'd have to have like 40 d'angelo's there for all the harmonies and shit going on but apart from that yeah it sounds live and it was recorded to tape too to uh, pro tools had just come in i think in 2000 or 99 when they were doing it and they recorded to, to analog tape which is rare <laughs> Pure Dominus, I tell you that I'm from the bed. Think I'm a hold on the wind and ride all of my songs with it. Wartime's Infinity, which is a record that's like, like our most recent album. Um, it's pretty eclectic, like it's very eclectic. And I think we were just trying to get across or covers from harder hip hop to more electronic hip hop to more organic hip hop to a little bit Afro beat. beat. Yeah, you know, so it kind of goes all through those ways and that's all what we're influenced by. So it's not a cohesive listen, but it definitely kind of shows what we like to do. It was mixed to sound raw. Like a lot of the vocals sound really clean when Rem records into it, and then I overcompress it and take a lot of high end off it. And there was a lot of older beats that I'd done from five, four years ago. Mm. So we just sort of work out what sort of sound we want to get across and Rem will write to those beats. And it's all done in just my bedroom, which is like a third of the size of this. Yeah. The drums are in the cupboard with all my clothes and everything. So it's a dead sound. Like this room, very dead. The vocal booth the other side, a little Pro Tools on my laptop, so there's two mics on everything. Um, so like with cymbals, it's a bit more nerdy, technical. I don't have enough mics to record the cymbals, so I'll, I'll play the bass drum and snare and the hi-hats, so one mic on that and one on those, and then go back, stick a, a mic on the cymbal, headphones on, and just be like, Psh, waiting, because <laughs> I don't have enough mics. Yeah, we don't really like polished sounding music. I mean, and that's hip hop as well, you know. It, the music still speaks through, like the musicality and the talent and the skill still speaks through all that shit. Doesn't matter how raw it is. How important am I to you? You're like a... You're like, 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it's totally, totally important. Like for our next record, we're gonna try and do something a lot more cohesive throughout the, the whole vibe. And you gotta have someone that's like-minded to do that. If we come up with an idea from something that we've heard, it's not gonna be like the other person be like, uh, I don't really know how to do that. Or uh, I don't think that's gonna sound good because we're on the same page. It's just like, yeah, let's do that, let's do that. And freedom of creativity. I think is important. I more listen to our music on pretty bad sound systems, kind of on purpose. I don't know, sometimes like if you've got a bad sound system, if it comes through and it sounds dope through that, you know, it's like a lot of our song tests, we'll test it just through the, the Mac, like the, uh, like, you know, the Your laptop, laptop speakers, speaker, yeah. you know, because you want to press play and see where stuff hits and if it's like distorting off that. Because I mean, I know so many people that, will literally hear your stuff exactly like that. You know, just press play and like, is this song dope? They're watching it on YouTube. You don't have headphones and you're just like, oh, sick, new track. You know, so if it sounds sick in that environment, then it should be, it should be dope.